Good morning. We survived our, our first taste of winter. Uh, for those, of you, those who are joining us online or through the cable, welcome as well. As we join together, I ask if you're able to join us in person that you would uh, take a moment. Let's stand and greet and welcome one another to worship today. glorious night. Thank you. 
to see the baby stood by his mother's side. Here lay the Savior inside a manger. Oh, what a glorious night. Oh, what a glorious night. I hear the angels sing. Shepherds wondered, they couldn't hide it, told everyone inside. All were amazed when they heard how God came down on this glorious night. God came down on this glorious night. I hear the angels singing, hallelujah, let the earth. This is the second Sunday in Advent. During these days, we are getting our hearts ready for the coming of the Christ child. Today, we light two purple candles. Last Sunday, we lit the candle of hope. We light another candle today to remind us that Jesus came to earth to show, to show and tell us of God's love. During Advent, we remember again God's gift of Jesus to the world and know that God's love for all people is the reason for this gift. When we look at the second candle, we remember God's love, which comes at Christmas in Jesus Christ. Matthew 1, verse 18, Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph, but before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. In Matthew 1, verse 20, an angel told Joseph, the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. 
During Advent, we remember that God loves us. Shall we pray? Thank you, God, for your son, Jesus. Thank you that you love us so much that you sent your son, Jesus Christ. Help us love one another, our friends at school and people everywhere we go. Help us, Father, to love through compassion, service, and forgiveness as your son has for us. Amen. I have a, a few announcements to share this morning. Christmas uh, program practice is after service today. You might have noticed our, our second song. Uh, some of the young ones were practicing their, their moves because they're getting ready for that. That's next Sunday. But uh, Christmas practice for the young ones is after service. That will take place in the sanctuary. So they'll just be in here for practice after service. If you hang around, you might get a sneak peek. Also, a reminder, um, Christmas caroling is set for next Sunday, the 17th, so the same day as the Christmas program. The bus will leave at 5 p.m., so please don't read that as be here at 5, because you'll be very close to missing the bus. So I hope you're able to come and join as we go around and spread good cheer through Christmas caroling. But try to be here a little before 5, and if you have any goodies to share, please bring them along as we'll share and have a good time together. Uh, a reminder, since there is an early out on Wednesday for the, the school, for Prairie, uh, there will be no KFC uh, this week um, because there is a half day of school at Prairie. Um, also, uh, just one correction from the bulletin. There is a, a chamber singers. That is today, not next night. It is today. So if you would like to go see the chamber singers sing at 2 o'clock at the United Methodist Church, please make a... Uh, plans to do so this morning. Here in the moment, we're going to dismiss our little ones for children's church. Uh, for those who are three years old through fifth grade, it's a chance for them to go and have a time of worship, a time of study, and asking questions and prayer. And so before we dismiss them to go with Katie uh, to the children's choir room, let's pray over their time. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for our little ones. We thank you for the blessing it is that give them an opportunity to come and learn about you, to be able to, to go through a lesson and ask questions about what this means and how it applies to their life either the day or, or as they continue to grow. Thank you for the blessing of that time and, and for our volunteers that are willing to, to take time out of service to help them grow and know you more. And Lord, I ask that your Holy Spirit be at work with them, that as they, as they go through the lesson, as they, they, they learn a little more, that it would help to instill in their hearts that it would stick with them as they grow up as young boys and girls into eventually young men and women who trust and follow you. Thank you for your blessings. In your name, amen. With that, we, inv we, we invite or dismiss our little ones for children's church while the choir sits up for special music.
As we turn to the word this morning, let's do so in prayer. Lord, Heavenly Father, as we again turn to your scriptures, as we turn to what you have spoken through the writers of scripture and the empowerment of your Holy Spirit, I ask that that same Holy Spirit that helped in the formation of this holy collection of, of letters and gospels and your truth would be at work in us to help us to understand what you have said to help us apply these things to our lives and be willing to be faithful in living these out each day as followers of you. We thank you that we don't have to guess our way through life, but you have given us your truth, the truth. That way we might follow you in faithfulness. And for this gift, we praise you through Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. This morning, we continue in our series, The Nightmares Before Christmas. We're looking at these nightmares before Christmas. We are talking about those things that can take away from the joy and just the wonderful aspect of this Christmas season. For there is much we enjoy about Advent, and we're just approaching some of those things that take a little bit of that away. And this morning, if you look in your bulletin, there is also notes if you choose to follow along with the notes throughout the message today. But as we look through this Christmas season, the season of Advent, it's hard to believe that Christmas Eve is already only two weeks away. I know for at least myself, it feels like we barely get done with Thanksgiving leftovers and it's full steam ahead on Christmas. 
Thanksgiving night, I think, is where the official switch happens, where there's a certain time of day where the Christian radio stations stop playing the normal mix, and it's all Christmas 24-7 all the way through, I believe, New Year's Eve. And with Christmas comes all those busy things, Christmas decorations, trees, wreaths, putting out lights. Um, Some people love decoration. They think it's a a fun activity. Others, they do it, but maybe don't enjoy it as much. But there's a lot of work that goes into it, digging them out, unwrapping the lights that are in the big mess, um, putting them up, trying not to fall off the ladder, all these things. There's also the traditions that come with Advent, and we celebrate those each year. And these are activities that add a familiarity to this season, and they help to make it meaningful. Yet there is a risk that if you overdo it, that if you do too much, that if you stretch yourself thin, you can become distracted from the true meaning of Advent. That is why this morning's we're talking about these nightmares before Christmas, these things that take away from the season. We're focusing on, on this idea of being busy, about being too busy to, to really reflect upon what this season of Advent is about. Because all these good things add up, and if our busyness becomes too great, then it'll be Christmas and we'll have missed out completely on the importance of this Advent season. Now, Advent is a, is a name for this time of year leading into Christmas. And if you have your notes with you in the bulletin this morning, our first point is that Advent means arrival. In a very literal sense, we're talking about the arrival of Jesus into the world. A very fitting, considering that we are in a season where we're preparing for that celebrating of Christmas, where we celebrate Jesus' birth, him arriving into the world. Now, last Sunday, we did mention a bit of the commercialization of Christmas, how advertisers want to make Christmas all about gift giving. And, and while there's many offenders, there's actually one commercial that stands out in relation to what we're talking about today, this idea of, of busyness. And I won't say the company, but there is a commercial that goes in depth that basically portrays the mission of Christmas is to find the perfect gift. And the main character goes through all kinds of crazy trials to find just the right present. Which, of course, is a good reminder for us that we need to be careful of of who or what influences you are listening to. Because these types of messages, they're out there in abundance. And while there's nothing wrong with thoughtfully picking out a gift for someone, there comes a point, much like is betrayed in that commercial, that there is too much focus being taken up because there is more a more important gift that we are to seek during advent than just the ones we give one another as we look into the gospel of luke i invite you if you have your bibles open we're looking at luke chapter 2 we're going to start here in verse 10 we read and the angel said to them fear not for behold i bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. This is from the night that Jesus was born. That very night, the good news of Jesus' arrival into the world was shared with a group of nearby shepherds, proclaiming how this news would bring great joy to all the people. And they were giving clues to, as to what to look for. They were looking for a baby in a cloth lying in a manger. And what a miraculous news this would have been given to them. News that would have brought great hope and expectation for what these shepherds would find as they set out on their search that night. 
And as we consider this message, as we consider their response, I want you to notice what happens in verse 16 upon hearing this message from the angels. We read, and they went with haste, meaning they went quickly and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. We find that indeed the words of the angels rang true. The shepherds set out on their search and they did find Jesus in the manger just as this angel had said they would. This is something that we see all the time in nativity scenes. The, the shepherds coming, there's usually always a sheep, right, in the part of the nativity representing them coming and finding Jesus that night. There's Mary, Joseph, baby Jesus, some animals, the shepherds. You know, God sent the, the message that this perfect gift was being born into the world. And upon hearing this news, we see the shepherds went and they went with haste to go find him. They got to be present for one of the most important events in all of human history. And it was because they were willing to listen to the angels or to the angel who said that they should go seek the baby Jesus. But you have to wonder for a second, what if? What if they had not gone? What if they had decided they were too busy in their shepherding duties? Imagine what they would have missed out on. They would not have seen the newborn Jesus. The reason we celebrate Advent. But we are glad that the shepherds did not make that mistake and they did not miss out on what God had in store for them. We must also be careful that we are just as willing to continue seeking out Jesus today. And so the question remains, in this Christmas season, throughout Advent, who or what are you seeking? Are you spending time seeking out Jesus through prayer and devotions? Or has this time already been taken up? Be with things like putting up lights, taking taking apart in half a dozen Christmas traditions, seeking out just the right present for everyone on your list. None of those things are problematic. They're all good, they're all fun, they all add to the season. But again, they can pile up if we do too much. And if it gets to be too much, it starts to choke out the most important part of this season, which is seeking Jesus with anticipation anticipation of his arrival, the celebration we are preparing for. And so as you, you follow the shepherd's example, as you follow their lead in seeking out Jesus in this season, something we should remember is the next point in your notes this morning, which is that God will not lead you down a wild goose chase. Now, you may or may not be familiar with what a wild goose chase is. Uh, I highly recommend if you have a chance to chase a goose, don't. Just don't. Essentially, a, a wild goose chase is a hopeless pursuit of something unattainable. Chase that goose all you want. You're going to burn a lot of calories, but you're not catching it. It's not going to happen. But that's what we think about. But we know that God will not lead you down that kind of wild goose chase. He does not lead you down a, a pursuit without hope. Instead, what we find in our relationship with Christ is that there is hope, that there is something obtainable because God does not send us after something that's beyond our reach. Instead, his desire is for his followers to seek him, to find him, and to to experience the full measure of his benefits and his gifts. On the night of Jesus' birth, our, our Heavenly Father wanted the gift of his Son to the world to be found in a manger. He wanted the Savior to be worshipped and adored and, and all of creation to know that this gift, along with, with all good gifts, come from his hand. And so the promise of Scripture is that those who seek Christ in sincerity find him. Just as the shepherds sought Christ, 
and they found him. And likewise, we know later on, the wise men sought after Jesus by following the star, and their efforts were rewarded when they did find him. Now, the reward of finding Jesus is worth the effort. Neither the shepherds or, or later the wise men declared that they were too busy to seek out Jesus. Instead, they made searching after Christ their priority. And if they had not been faithful in the seeking, they would have missed out on that gift of meeting our Lord and Savior. And we know that we do not want to miss out on God's good gifts. Because God loves us. That God's gifts are the best gifts. And sometimes, God gives us gifts that are great, that are wonderful, and we might not even recognize it. For example, this whole season of Advent, it is a gift. It, it might seem busy. It might seem hard. I, I heard someone this morning talking about all the things going on and filling up their calendar. Yes, those things all happen. But this season is a gift, and it's not because of all the things. The season's a gift because of what we get to celebrate and what we get to anticipate. And perhaps it's hard to see it that way. Perhaps your schedule is already full. And it's just more things competing with a busy schedule. It can be hard at times to understand that gift when the cup is overflowing, but not in abundance of joy or hope, but just things to do. That might be you, it might not. But if it is, it does not have to be that way. See, there's one simple trick, you know, if you ever watch an infomercial, there's always one simple trick. There's one simple trick to take the stress out of the Christmas season. It's the next point in our notes this morning. It's to focus on that which matters most. There's a lot of things vying for your focus, but focus on that which matters most. If you have time for more, do more. I very much wanted to decorate the outside of our house with wonderful lights. It's a dream of mine to have a wonderful display. This year, the inside looks wonderful. The outside, it's going to wait till next year. We had a little too much going on. And there's a few other things I wasn't willing to sacrifice in order to do that. Maybe next year, I'll take the, uh, take the example of my neighbors. Some of them started putting up their decorations before Thanksgiving, and I thought that was odd. And then it got cold out, and I thought that was really smart. But there comes a time where you have to make a choice. What are you going to focus on? That as, as time becomes more and more scarce, as we get busier and busier in this time of year, what are the things that you start trimming out of your schedule, and what are the things that you're not willing to budge from? Because time is in short supply. And so when you figure what is it is you're not going to budge from, focus first on the meaning of the season. Focus first on that gift of Jesus. Because since the beginning, our Heavenly Father has consistently been doing good things and giving good gifts to his creation. Not because of any obligation he might have, but because this is part of who he is as our Heavenly Father. Just how a good parent wants to provide for their children what they need. We know God does the same for us. Giving good gifts to us as the children of God. From Matthew 7, uh, we find this. Jesus is talking about gift giving. He says, Or which one of you, if his sons ask him for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? We see that God gives good gifts. Now, we can give good gifts, but how much better does God understand what we truly need in this world? And the ultimate example of this is Jesus born in a manger. Because Christmas is not just about Jesus being born into the world. It's not just about the nativity and the star and the wise men and all these things. Christmas is also about why he came. Because one of the clearest demonstrations of God's love 
is the gift of Jesus as we find demonstrated in John chapter 3. And it's not just John 3, 16, but it's the verses that come after. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and the people love the darkness rather than the light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light, and does not come to the light, lest his works should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light. And so it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. The gift of Jesus born in the manger is also the gift of Easter, of what Jesus came to do, the grace that we find through Christ. As we were saying, God is a giver of good gifts. What could be greater than the grace that he has given us, the new life he calls us into? As John reminds us, he so loved the world and he loves each and every one of us. And he showed just how much he loves you by sending his son as the perfect gift. He sent his one and only begotten son to be born in the manger in Bethlehem, to come and be the Savior of the world. And his birth was not meant to be kept secret. It was not done in hiding. It was meant to be shared. The angel shared for the shepherds to come because it was meant to be shared. It was meant to be celebrated. For Jesus Christ was born into the world. And we know that he, that he longs to also be born in the hearts of every person who knows God and loves him. For as we remember the words of the angel to the shepherds from verse 20, or 2 verse 10, it says, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Jesus is good news of great joy. Which makes you wonder, is this good news still the message that's being presented at Christmas. I remember in the last decade or so, there were um, a lot of headlines. I don't know, um, depends on how old you are, you might remember some of these. The, the war on Christmas. Do you remember that? Anyone here remember the war on Christmas? It was a big deal, and maybe it's not around anymore. And, and really what there was, there was this effort to get people to stop saying Merry Christmas and said to say Happy Holidays. And, and there was a lot of pushback, and then there was pushback to the pushback. And just like everything, people got divided and started arguing about it. Or at least the news said people were arguing about it. I'm not sure how much arguing there, there was. But while there was much discussion about the so-called war on Christmas... I fear we might have missed the mark on this one. That while people were arguing about terminology, we might have missed the actual war on Christmas. That even though Christmas season has a time of year is expanding, again, for some starting even before Thanksgiving, the worry is that as Christmas has expanded, it has also lost some of its meaning. For we have, in, in, in our part of the country, or even just the United States as a whole, we have more Christmas than ever. It feels like there's more Christmas. But what we need is not more Christmas. What we need is more Christ. And we need to be careful not to confuse these two. Because Christmas is fun. I love Christmas. But there's a lot of people that try to have Christmas without the Christ. And so as we, we try to get these two straight, our, our next point in our notes this morning is that pursuing the traditions of Christmas is not the same as seeking Jesus. It can be, but it also cannot be. Depends on what you are doing. 
You know, if you're reading together through the nativity story, that's very much pursuing after Jesus. But there's a lot of things that are fun that happen this time of year that make us really busy, and it's not the same. And you can do both. But just don't forsake the pursuit of Christ in order to fill your schedule with too much other things. Because in the season where we celebrate Jesus being born into the world, if you are not careful, instead of a time of coming closer to God, your own actions and your own full calendar and that busyness that we put on ourselves can actually make this a season where you feel more distant from him. And maybe you're already there. Maybe you're already in a place where God feels farther away. If, if that is you, remember what the shepherds did. They sought after Jesus. Because as God spoke through the prophet Jeremiah, you might be familiar with this, Jeremiah 29, 13, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. This is God speaking through the prophet Jeremiah nearly 600 years before the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem. He's speaking to the Israelites who were God's people who were living in a foreign land after being defeated by their enemies. They are at a low point as a people. And they were forced to leave their homes. They were forced to go into a foreign land where they felt oppressed, where they felt lonely, and they did not have the freedom that they had before being conquered. But even as they felt abandoned and far away from God, living through a dark place in their own story, we're told how God sent a messenger named Jeremiah with good news for the people, telling them that as they seek God, they will find him. And even more than that, continuing in verse 11, he says to them, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for, for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you can call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. These are the words that God spoke through Jeremiah as a gift to a people who needed a bit of hope. They needed a gift to fill them with a bit of expectation of, of what would come. Because again, these people were in a dark season of their lives. And we know God the Father does give good gifts to his children when they need them most. He makes for a way for his people to come back to him. Just like during their exile, God made a way for the, the Israelites, the people of God, to come back to him by seeking him with all their heart by praying and calling upon his name. Through Jeremiah, God gave the promise of a great future and a great hope. Yet we know Jeremiah was not the only voice in the Bible who spoke about seeking God. In Matthew chapter 7, we find these words of Jesus. He says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, it will be opened. Again, repeated in scripture, we find this calling to seek God, because as you seek God, you will find him. These words of Jesus, they are an invitation an invitation to an arrival, an invitation to Advent. So what if you took Jesus up on this invitation? What if instead of being too busy, you made Advent about joyfully seeking Jesus? Because Jesus was not born into the world and hidden away in a manger. The angels came to the shepherds so that they would seek him, just as Jesus wants to be found by you. And so the promise that we are given is that if you seek Jesus with all your heart, you will find him. Not you might find him, you will find him. The invitation has been made. The Holy Spirit is alive in this world calling people to him. 
And so how will you respond? What will your focus be during this season of Advent? As we contemplate these things, let us turn to our Lord in prayer. Oh Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you again for your work in our lives. And we thank you for the work of your Holy Spirit. We ask that same Spirit would rest on us, that pull us away from our busyness and into a time of focus on you. Not that we can't do a lot of different things, but that we need to make sure that these things don't draw our focus from that which matters most. And so, Lord, we thank you for the gift of Jesus. We thank you for the gift of this Advent season, a time of preparing for that celebration of Christmas and the miracle that you brought forth in order to bring Christ into this world. Thank you, O God. We also come to you with grateful hearts. In a time where it's starting to get cold and windy out, you have brought an opportunity for us to gather for worship in a place of warmth. Lord, we also ask in the season that you would bring health as cold and flu and other things spread. Bring health and good cheer to your people. We also ask for peace for a world that is anything but at peace. Although it might feel distant because we, we experience a level of peace here in the, in the Midwest, but there are places in this world where people are suffering, where people are hurting, And we ask that you would calm angry minds, that you'd bring the right people to the right place to bring peace and draw, O Lord, people to you. We thank you for the opportunity we're going to have here in a little bit to to invite Richard and and share about the work of the Gideons. Thank you for the ministry they have, for what they do in sharing your truth by offering the New Testament and the Bible to those who don't have a copy to read for themselves. We also ask you to be with our Operation Christmas Child boxes. Uh, we're delighted to hear that we know where they're going, that they're on their way to Chile, and I ask that you, would, that you would make a smooth pathway for those boxes, that they would not have any issues or concerns as they make it to their final destinations and has those, those kids and families receive those boxes, that with it they might hear the gospel and your spirit might draw them to you and they might respond in faith. Oh, Lord. As we gather as your people, we also raise up to you those We're going through a time seeking healing. We think of Julie who's preparing for surgery this week. We ask that that goes well. And for Ron, as he continues healing his wrist, we ask that that healing would continue to mend. And for Zachary, as he works through his physical therapy, that he would continue to see progress for his efforts. And Lord, we raise up to you others that although they're not on the prayer list, we know they they have concerns or maybe they're concerns that only they know and only you know. And we ask that you would still bring them comfort and others in their life to offer support. We also especially raise up those who are battling cancer. We think of Kelly and for Scott, for Jaime and Pastor Irwin and Randy and Roxanne, and and we know there are others. Lord, grant them strength and patience. In times of, of pain, offer relief. And help them despite maybe working through treatments or or other appointments, to still find joy, to still be able to focus on your goodness and love in this gift of Christ we find in this Advent season. Oh, Lord, Heavenly Father, please be with those who are unable to worship with us regularly due to illness or life situation. We thank you they have a means to join us online or, or through the cable network. And we ask that although we might be separated through distance, that they would feel united with us in one body as we come together as your people. And we pray the prayer that you have taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Where yours is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we have an opportunity. I'd like to invite Richard forward. Uh, Richard's going to share with us this morning from the Gideons, and it's a pleasure to have you with us today. Thank you. Good morning. Faith like a mustard seed. Every month, auxiliary of the Logan Ming Camp, West Virginia, gathered for a fruitful time of prayer at a local diner. At one of their meetings, a couple was sitting nearby within hearing distance. The auxiliary didn't want to disturb their meal, so one of the women went over to explain what they would be doing. Upon sharing that they would be praying, the auxiliary asked if they had any prayer requests. The wife at the table, Dorothy was moved by the gesture and nodded yes. Our daughter is on life support. The husband excused himself, seeming troubled, while Dorothy stayed behind as we prayed. Afterwards, we spoke with Dorothy and learned that she was familiar with some of the local auxiliary. We shared a word of witness and promised to continue praying for their daughter. Roughly a year later, we received an update from Dorothy that said, I'm so glad the Lord brought us together that night. <clears throat> I had been so worried about my daughter and knew the situation was out of my control, but I could not find peace about the situation. While you prayed, though, I heard the words of Matthew 17:20. If you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, that got my attention. In that moment, I knew God was speaking through you to me, an inexplicable peace washed over me, and I knew he was in control of the situation. My daughter was going to make it. I still carry the testament you gave me with me at all times, and only a few months after we met, I gave my life to the Lord. Thank you. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the things whereto I sent it. Isaiah 55, 11. To get a clearer picture of the numbers, Gideons and Auxiliary distribute more than two copies of God's word every second of every day. That's two copies every time your heart beats. The end of the year 2022 marked a milestone for Gideons International. That being, through God's grace, Gideons have handed out 2.5 billion scriptures worldwide. The cost of a New Testament is approximately $1.80 each. That price includes printing it, shipping it, and putting it in the hands of those in need of God's word. Hotel motel Bibles cost approximately $7 each and have the potential of reaching 2,300 lives in their course of their life expectancy of five to six years at which time they're repurposed at a jail or prison. Everything you donate today goes for printing and shipping those scriptures to people in need of God's word. There was a <clears throat> scripture blitz in South Africa. Gideons were traveling around handing out Bibles at schools. They were way out in the sticks. The last school was way off the beaten path. So far off the beaten path that you drove until you came to an intersection where there would be a jar of gas setting. You poured the gas into your vehicle, left your money, and prayed that you made it to the next jar of gas. They were at the last school of the day, handing out testaments. They got down to the last class. There was 45 students and a teacher they needed 46 testaments. They counted what they had left over three times. They only had 42 testaments left. One of the local Gideons that was with the group said, let's hand out what we have, and somehow I'll get the remaining testaments to the school. They handed out testaments to all 45 students, gave one to the teacher, asked, did everybody receive a testament? Yes they still had three testaments in the box. That's the power of our God. 
The Gideon Card Bible Program provides thousands of copies of God's Word across the world. Gideon Cards provide a service to your community, allowing churches to connect Christians with the singular objective of the Gideons International, winning others to the Lord Jesus Christ. On another scripture blitz, <clears throat> the native tongue was Swahili, so the testaments they were handed out were printed in Swahili. One of the young men that received a testament came up to the Gideons and said, Sir, there's something wrong with my testament. On the outside, the cover is printed in Swahili, but when you open it up, the inside is printed in Portuguese. The Gideon said, I am so sorry, I don't know how that happened. I'll replace it for you. No, no, sir, you don't understand. My father can't read Swahili, but he can read Portuguese. I'm going to give it to him. Now, you might think that the wrong cover got put on the wrong testament, except the testaments that are printed in Swahili are printed on one continent, and the testaments that are printed in Portuguese are printed on another continent. Those two testaments should have never crossed paths. And out of the 100,000 testaments they handed out on this scripture blitz, that was the only testament like that. That's the power of our God. So why are we here today? We're here to ask you to partner with the Gideons International because without that partnership between Gideons International, the church, and you, Bibles will not get placed in hospitals, hotels, and motels. Scriptures will not get handed out at schools, prisons, firehouses, police stations, and military bases, just to mention a few, here in the U.S. as well as around the world. At the conclusion of today's service, you'll have the opportunity to help provide scriptures in local communities as well as around the world by gifting to the Gideons. There's a special insert in your bulletin that you can use to leave a gift for the Gideons today or take it with you and use it to mail a gift to Gideons International if you are unprepared to give today. Also, anyone wishing information about the different avenues of assisting the Gideon mission please contact me with any questions after the service. I would love to share how the Gideons have changed my life. Thank you, Pastor Allen, and all of you, for allowing the Gideons to be a part of your service today and share about the impact your prayers and support are having around the world. Please keep the Gideons in your prayer, and may God bless you all. If you have an interest in the Gideons or would like to share a gift this morning, uh, Richard will join us in the back of the sanctuary following service. I invite you, if you're willing and able, to please stand with us as we sing together, Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
let us share in the blessing that we find in the first chapter of Revelation. That to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom, priest to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Shine.